Okay, I'd like to welcome uh, Peter Raven uh, this afternoon to talk about uh, his work with the American College of Sports Medicine over the years, and particularly his editorship of uh, the journal Medicine and Science and Sports and Exercise. So, welcome, Peter. Thanks. And uh, if you could just sort of start off by you know, what, what, you're, what you're doing now and where you're at and how well, long you've been there. And... <laughs> well, I'm professor of physiology, integrated physiology at the University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth. And I've actually been there for, this is going into my 32nd year, and uh, watched the school grow from a single sort of story TCOM, Texas College of Osteopathic Medical School, Osteopathic Medical School to now a big health science center with five buildings, all eight, 10 stories high, and another another two on the map, so. Do you have a lab there, Peter, then? Yeah, Is I actually a... have, yeah, two, two, uh, two labs, um, and I'm training four PhD students right now. At the moment. And, uh, Do you get some postdocs, too? Or? I've got had one postdoc, very successful postdoc, and that he's now assistant professor, research professor, but he's from Japan, and uh -huh. he's, on his way back to Japan to take up a professorship at mm -hmm. Toyo University near Tokyo. And, and where did you have your training, Peter? Before I actually had my training at uh, University of Oregon. I got my PhD. I came from England, of course, at St. Luke's College, Exeter, which was a big rugby physical education school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, went to the University of Oregon and did, uh, completed the bachelor's degree and a uh, master's degree and, and PhD uh, w under Eugene Evanock, who is uh, com uh, sort of a colleague or a PhD student when Steve Horvath was at Iowa. Oh, yeah, okay. So when I came for postdoc, he suggested I go down with Steve Horvath, and Steve had one of the first exercise physiology postdoctoral programs out of the NIH, mm -hmm. uh, the, him and John Halazi. And so we, I was there with Steve from uh, postdoc to assistant research professor. To, I was there for six years. And where was that, Peter? UC yeah. Santa Barbara, yeah. the Institute it, of Environmental Stress. Did you overlap with Barbara Drinkwater? I was actually there at the same time. Oh, I wondered about right, that. Right, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, we were both there. Good group of people. We actually right? shared an office together. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And that was when? The 80s? Yeah. Uh, no, it was 69. 70, 69, I went there. Wow. And she came That's in bad. in 70, 71. So, and then I left there in 75 and went to Cooper Clinic with Mike Pollock. But that only lasted a couple of years because the faculty positions of this private school, when it got taken over by the state, had to be expanded to t teach the physiology and anatomy and all of the basic sciences of the medical school. I see. And that's when you That's when there. I moved to, to health science. Center. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, one of the things we wanted to talk about uh, with as many of you as we could get were the past editors mm -hmm. of uh, medicine and science and sports and exercise. And um, I have here that uh, you, you became editor in 89, I could be wrong, but <laughs> right around there through 92, 93 in, the, in that span. No, no? Uh, I, was, I, I was editor for 12 years. Um, so I've, yes, 89 to 2000. And okay, so okay, okay, sure, because Kent. Right. Yeah, it's my math. Uh, Kent Pandolf. Right came after you. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you were on there a long time. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. Pardon me, I got my math wrong. Yeah. So yeah. um but you came after Buskirk had a, a uh, second no. editorship in there, I think after No, I Tipton. think I came after Tipton, didn't I? Uh I think Buskirk he, yeah, maybe that's came right. back that's, and did a you're couple years right. yeah. or something. <laughs> yes he did. That's um, right. And I don't, I don't know the story behind that, why he, uh, he, I mean, he was editor earlier and then. Yeah, no, nor do I actually. I, I, the, no, I don't remember. I was on the board at the time. Well, it was my presidency and pro, uh, president-elect was, mm -hmm. was there. And there were some issues of turnaround and things like that, that uh, and the transfer from an editorial office being held with the editor-in-chief as to whether it would go into the 
uh, school or whether there would be actual financial assistance and those types of things. Okay, where so that was sort of the transitional some, were, period? Right. Okay. And my first term, it was still transitional. We, but we were able to get support for the editorial office. Which, when you took over, did that move down to, to your place to then Fort in Texas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. We still handled uh, everything at the home office with Mark Robertson. But, but in terms of... Uh, the day-to-day -day day, right, stuff. Right. You, you, now, th so then ACSM was paying for staff help and... Half-time uh, half uh, secretarial support and expenses. Uh, okay. For the, of what it was costing me, yeah. And and at that time, were you doing six a year then? We were doing six a year, yeah. It was my uh, sort of vision to have, move it to once a month. Mm -hmm. and, uh, because the, that part of what the backlog was in pages was because... You only did six, six a year. Right, yeah. and, and they were contracting a certain number of pages. And when Williams and Wilkins came in, they, they sort of upped the ante and did different modeling and saw that we could go forward with... Make once, it a, on, once, once a month. Right. Okay. And that immediately jumped two things, the impact factor and, uh, and the, um, the actual numbers of papers that were submitted. Mm -hmm. They were, a couple of the guys were talking this morning about uh, going to the computerized system. I forgot the software, it's mm. called it they're all using now. Right. It, was that in place when no, you were there, no. Peter? So we, you're that's, still that's doing... That's why I needed secretarial support. <laughs> so you're still mailing out mm -hmm. manuscripts that's and right. getting responses right. back, and, which is a tremendous amount. Yeah, of and work. I had a really good assistant, Sandra England, that still works oh, at I the remember university. her, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so, and she kept up with a lot of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. I, I do remember that. Well, what were, what were some of the... the new things you tried to do, Peter, over your time well, as editor. It, I mean, that spans quite a while, and you yeah. had to... The first thing was to get that backlog down. So by going from monthly, uh, from bi-monthly mm -hmm. to monthly, well, that really helped. And that happened get, during your term? Right, okay. it was one year. I wasn't off. sure when it took place. Yeah. But and then um, the second thing was that I uh, noticed we call it medicine and science and sports, but there weren't any medicine papers. Mm -hmm. There were no clinicians actually submitting papers. And so we did that um, segmenting of the paper, yes. of the journal, mm -hmm. and then I sort of recruited some of the physicians now to start to get their residents to put their research in and that stuff like that. That was a great that. idea, I think, uh, with that uh, clinical section. Right, right. And uh, the other um, thing was that it really followed on what, what Bergfeld and I had done. He, he was president before me, then Gisolfi and then me. Mm -hmm. And Bergfeld and I and McKaylee and Lombardo were at, at the time in the college beginning the team physician type certification mm -hmm. program or, or, or courses. And that led me to say we need to really give them an outlet for yeah. the journal. Yeah. So yeah, because they, there was no college publication right. at the time where right. they true. had any outlet at all. So. so then, and recruiting sort of symposia as well was another methodology of, of actually raising the impact factor. Mm -hmm. and then, but the one drive for me was to always make sure we got good basic science mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the physical fitness and the, I didn't, the epidemiology came after my my term. Yeah, we had, we talked about that this morning, and it's sort of becoming a more and more dominant part of, right. of and, the field. And Not that it's bad, but it took a while for that to to come in. I guess. But what what is happening is that the basic sciences are moving back to experimental physiology, uh, back to physiology. APS. So oh. there's a lot of. Um, I hadn't yeah, heard we, about that. We go see. We saw some posters today that uh, we wonder how they actually got in, mm. and that means that the fellows of the college aren't doing their job. They're, that's who's screening. That's these supposed things. to. They're supposed to sign off on on these things, and if they don't. Uh, they put in rubbish and yeah that's a serious thing if the right. if the science starts to suffer I 
I think the science is starting to start. Yeah, because <laughs> that's what the college has been right. pretty much based on right. all along. And, and if, they, if researchers see that, they're going to continue to, to go towards JAP. Right. And now, so you know, there's certainly a, a need for the, the policies and the epidemiologies, but do it with, my way is to the, the Frank Booth way, you know, mm -hmm. putting the hard science to it after the epidemiologists have identified out mm -hmm. what the issues are. We need to put the hard science to it. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, some of the poster presentations that I've seen here, I don't think there's a lot of hard science coming. Wow. I hadn't heard about that. Uh, had the uh, animal uh, model uh, been, um, that fight had been fought long before you became editor. Tipton was telling me a little bit about. Use of, of animal models? Yeah. 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 Well, it never, it didn't, I didn't seem to get be involved in it, although an, animal usage is always involved in, in basic in medical basic, science. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a given. It, it's a given at your university, at, your, at, the, um, at, the, at the society level and all of those things. And the point is if you handle the animals correctly, and there's a little bit of an overbearing attitude, but the, mm -hmm. what, what's happened is the dog model is probably extinct now. It's, it's mm. bec and Harold Laughlin's group going to the pig model, and then there's goat and sheep coming. And, and there's always been the mice and rats. Mice and rats, and of course the transgenics, so that makes you stay in the smaller animals, the ma mouse and the rat. Now what does that mean, Peter? I don't know what that Well, the, the being able to knock out the gene that you, so that that you in want the animal model, or the, don't the, want one right, way or the right, other to, to, to examine manipulate what, it. Right. Yeah, I see. But it's always a, a question. You knock that out, that means something else. Start to try and upregulate, or it's yeah. lethal, yeah. and that, and it dies. So, then that's so a it's not, not a problem. <laughs> so we have some problems with, but there are now other techniques of upregulating genes with uh, with viruses that they can. So you can turn on a gene or switch it oh. off. And you use antisense techniques to mm -hmm. switch off genes as mm -hmm. well. So, and Ken Baldwin, for instance, has a lot of beautiful work on that in mm -hmm. the muscle. Well, uh, one of the issues that we talked about this morning and, and, uh, is how long it took to get before something was accepted and then before it was actually published. Well, that, Did, that was the biggest challenge for me when I came in. I it went it, from yeah, yeah. something like a year to a year and a half, if I remember rightly, submission to Til publish, yeah. if accepted. And the, the, the term between acceptance, uh, the time of, Yo, of the actually review process. review process itself was yeah. probably about six or seven months. And you were, and you tried and to... We got to that down to less than, less than two months. Oh, wow. And, in in yeah. light of the fact that it's mailed out, physically right. mailed, that's right. quite an accomplishment. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we first of all used to publish a bit of a hit list on reviewers and nobody, people didn't like that, so, mm -hmm. so I had to pull that. But, uh, <laughs> it, now this so. was all blind review when you were editor? Um, or not? Had I've it got changed to think about that. that. I think I changed it back from what Tipton had done. Yeah, yeah he had made a point about the pros and cons right. of it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know, it, it's open now, right? Yes. Yeah, and so you yeah, probably I, changed I it. I changed it back, and, and I'm an edit, associate editor for Experimental Physiology, which is one of the Physiological Society journals, and mm -hmm. we, it's open review there. Uh, it's blind, that they don't know who the reviewers are, but and same, same with MSSE, they don't, the authors don't know who the reviewers are. Oh, but, but the reviewers know who the, the author authors, is. Right. Yeah, I think Tip was saying it was blind both ways. It was, yeah, yeah. for Tip. Okay. And it, it has its pros and cons, uh, my one being, if, if it's coming from a real good lab, you don't have to worry too much about calibrations and technologies and te techniques being accurate. Mm -hmm. If it's coming from somewhere in Idaho, Podunk, Idaho, then you better check. You, better, you, you have to really know what, who it was that did that work, mm -hmm. you know, so.
-hmm. So yeah, the sure. blind stuff is a bit of an issue. I think. Yeah. Were there any um, what the, uprisings when you were editor, Peter? Or is no, things go pretty really, smooth. No, or? everything went fine. I think the biggest uh, problem I had was when uh, I, with, with help Jerry Mitchell, recruited a, a uh, Bethesda conference manuscript to be published by American Heart and us at the mm -hmm. same time, and I put my editor, I put my name on it as editor with the two guys, Cohen and Mitchell. Who were, and Cohen didn't like that. Oh. He, he brought that to the presidents, and we had to publish a retraction and the whole sure. thing. So, yeah. um. but no, the the not really. Uh, tip, tip was a little bit more regimented in having meetings, editorial board meetings before mm -hmm. the, before uh, during each meeting, and and it probably was the right way to go. But I. I let that slide after a while because meeting after meeting after yeah. meeting. You know, and well, you probably had to come in and, and pick a, your own group of associate editors too. Right, too. I did, and yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I did, did that and then we tried to change them every three to four years. Mm -hmm. So, But one of the focuses was, again, if you looked at Buzz Kirk and Tipton's editorial board, there were no real practicing clinicians, there were right. no sports medicine physicians, yeah. and so there, there was a, a group of people like Doug McCaig and Lombardo and a few other people that I was able to recruit or ask, and McKaylee mm -hmm. Cantu, mm -hmm. ask them if they would help me. And especially since you were trying to recruit clinical papers right. anyhow, right. so it just made perfect sense. Right. Yeah. And we still kept the other reviewers. It was just that you had to make more space or less, less basic science and less yeah. fitness people. And we did, I think we saw over my time a loss of the biomechanics. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we ever, but then I don't think they were big because they'd already had, they had their, their own, own, journal, own journal. organization and yeah. stuff like that. So. That happened, that there was a lot of those so-called splinter groups right. that, that went out and did their own journal and, and so forth. But we, again, we were discussing it this morning. It seems that MSSE has really maintained a very strong standing over the years mm -hmm. in probably the top three of the sports science type journals. Right. And we actually, Impact Factor went past JAP when I was editor. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And that, That's... that changed therefore. Philosophy and, it, and formats. And, and what you're saying is that it might be going the other way again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's already the impact factor has already been changed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JAP is with Dempsey as editor as, uh, and these point counterpoints and various other things that he's done. It's really picked it's it up again. Picked yeah. it up. Yeah. Any talk of a name change when you were editor? I guess this keeps coming up. <laughs> Yeah, although I, I, I discouraged it. <laughs> Put it I don't that way. blame you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it, this has lasted quite a while. Yes, now, it so. has. I think Tipton was the one that got. It was just medicine and science. It, and yeah, sports, Tipton and got, got the, the end exit. exercise. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that's hurt. I don't no, think anyone's no, upset about it. No. It, the, but the, now, sort of, the, the people who do want it is other clinicians. They would like to see the ma name change. They're the, the ones because sports medicine to them is not exercise. It's, yeah. it's sports medicine. Right. It's, but now they have their own journal. Yeah, so. they do. And, and they wanted to uh, give the option to the memberships to, for oh, one, or what, the other. one or the other. And that was another sort of internal battle on, on the... Board, yeah, I don't even board know. of trustees. How? What is it now? Do, do it, they get a pick? Do you know? I don't, I don't think I don't they know. do. No. I so does everybody get all the? Yeah. Stuff? The, no, they don't. They don't get the Journal of Sports Medicine as part of their membership oh, they dues. Don't. They can okay. apply. They can get it themselves. They would have to get that extra. Right. Then. Right. But uh, medicine and science and sports, and then I think what's the health fitness one as well? I'm mm -hmm. not sure. I don't how know how that, that works either. That may be something because I I'm, I know all of those structures came in and. Now I'm going to talk to Ed Halley later this yeah. afternoon. He, the modeling of the financial modeling that's done by the publishers made it 
you know, this is silly to do to do what you're trying to do. Yeah. Because yeah. the journal is a big income maker for the for the college, mm -hmm. even though we give it out as a membership benefit. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I'm sure there's other libraries and so forth that that are buying subscriptions to it as well. Yeah, yeah. It's starting to get to the phase where, where um, the electronic versions yeah. of your journal. That's, we were, that's been a big issue all yeah, day today yeah, is yeah. how far that's going to go. That right. A lot of people don't want a hard copy anymore. Right. Or, well, one of the things I wanted to bring up and uh, thank you for is that I think it was uh, around your presidency that you came up with the idea of writing a history of the college. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but actually, Toby Tate talked about an oral history. She, she had an oral history project going on down at the University of Houston or, or at Baylor College of Medicine, I can't remember which. And I said, well, that sounds like a good idea for this. And then I brought it up at the board and I think it was, she, uh, Toby had put an oral historian, but Barbara had put your name forward and um, that, that's how you got started. It's been, it's been a great development yeah. for me, so yeah. thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for taking it on, actually. <laughs> I've enjoyed my association. Yeah. So, Peter, you've been in every aspect of the college, um, just jumping away from the journal a, mi a minute. Uh, how do you see things going other, other than the, what we talked about, about the well, science? Well, I, I th th there's two thoughts about getting bigger. Yeah. If you get bigger, then you have to allocate resources to more people and, and mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure that, that I remember the American Medical Joggers Association went from 7,000 to 30,000. And they suddenly found they, they were going broke. Mm -hmm. So they cut off what all these associate members of affiliate and stayed back. And now mm -hmm. they're back in the black again. Mm -hmm. So I've got that fear. Um, not all of us are as passionate about public policy issues that although Bank, Bank's talk today was clearly asking ACSM to become a public policy guy, yeah, you know, but, yeah. uh, or a public voice, a policy voice. And he's very much involved in that in Europe with uh, Benta Peterson. But, but um, no, I, uh, that, that's a lot of the questions for the scientists. That, mm. Well, we used to come here and see, but there's some comments made, about, well, we've become an aphid. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, with a lot, which, lot of going, stuff going on and different sections and yeah, uh, and I think the science is 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 losing out, yeah, that's, which is unfortunate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Peter, thank you so okay. much for coming by and and chatting and uh, sharing your all right. ideas and thank you Good. for all you do for the college. <laughs>